lot of people come on social media for their business and they get like two followers and they're like running 50% off ads and sales. And it's like, you don't even have an audience. And it's like, you know, the whole point of we're in business. So the whole point is to make money. We're never going to apologize about making money. If you are apologetic about making money, this isn't the channel for you, but right. there's ways to go about making money. And sometimes like if you promote too much or you're too gimmicky or you, you it's like you can make money, but over the course of time, you're diluting your brand yeah. because it's not. And even if we look at the best brands in the world, like Nike, like they have sale, but how many times do you actually see a Nike commercial selling something? Mm. It's not really too often. Most Nike commercials are like, you know, um, Andre Agassi, that legendary situation, or Michael Jordan with mm. dunking the basketball, yeah. Serena Williams with her daughter, like even Colin Kaepernick. It's an it's a ad to build their brand, not really selling anything because you're going to buy it on the back end, mm -hmm. just by the strength of their brand just becoming so dominant that they don't necessarily have to beat you in the head with 50% off sales. You feel mm -hmm. compelled to buy it because they've built so much brand equity yeah. over the years. I think what you said is very important. John, I'm glad you broke that down with the awareness, interest and trust. It's like, if you have two followers, we don't even have an awareness of you and you're trying to sell something, which automatically makes me distrust. Mm. Right. And so how do I go into a relationship with distrust? I don't. And so now I turn away. So now, even if you put valuable content out to the world, you've already lost us because you started selling to us. And so it's, it's very key to give value, give value, give value. Let people see what's happening. Let them build their trust. Let them build the awareness of the brand, which will and then turn grow the interest in what you're doing, which will make it a lot easier when it's time for you to say, you know what? All right. I've been doing this. I've been doing this. Here's what I also have to offer. You know what I mean? And that's something right. I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let you finish, John. Um, but somebody said, but how? But everybody's way is different as far as how to build brand. But how we built our brand in two minutes is that we just created as maximum value as possible. So before we had a podcast, we had an Instagram page. Well, even before I had my own personal Instagram mm -hmm. page, I wasn't selling anything. I was just, mm -hmm. I was just, I was just adding value. People that I would take time to write, write captions, write posts, make videos. When we started Earn Your Leisure. The whole, we didn't really even know, to be completely honest, we, we didn't know how to monetize a podcast, but we figured that once we had enough attention, there would be opportunities to monetize. So our goal was just to add as much value as possible. And that helped build our brand on social media. And then, you know, all throughout, we just had a unique way to relay information with business and mix it with pop culture. And that was our brand building proposition was that we're gonna mm. educate people for free. We're gonna give as much value as possible we didn't sell anything. We didn't have merch. Mm. We didn't have a live event. We didn't have anything. Nothing. So now when we have paid products and we've already built brand equity, but it took us 12, 13 months before we even, probably even longer than that, like before we even sold one thing that made us any <laughs> Yo, and so it reminds me of that, of that graph, that last graph, right? You guys didn't start with sales. You could have, if you, you could have tricked a few people into buying a quick e-course right at the jump without really knowing anything. But instead you were that red line, you were, you, you were building that brand equity by just giving, 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 giving. And as a result, look at the platform that you guys grew. And, you know, speaking of Nike, I, I caught a glimpse of their brand essence framework and their one word was performance. I don't think that you're any faster in Nike's than you are in Adidas. But they their their core brand was performance and think about how just think about the look of their logo. The swoosh kind of just makes you feel like performance. The flash. Yeah. The, yeah. You, you know and and yeah. and it's a really astute observation Rashad that that they don't they don't sell I never thought thought about that they don't sell shit in their commercials no they don't they Think don't sell they brands so so for any so if, if you have a tea company if you have an e-com company you know what are ways what's that word going to be for you a and then b how can you associate your brand with that feeling for example at loop our purpose is to move people we don't care about insurance in the same way that Nike only cares about sneakers because it drives performance. So we, we, we stand for movement. 
right? Because insurance gets you on the road and then you go and you got to do all the things that you got to do. So how, do, how are we going to build brain around that? Well, we're going to have photography of people on the road, on their hustle, doing their shit. And just, uh, just a little photo, just a little icon at the bottom that says loop, right? And so, for example, those are just some of the low-hanging fruit ways, man, that, that, we could, um, that we could build brain. You got to lock in on that specific value that you feel you want to put brand equity into. And, and, and I also think that for building a brand, going back to our personal experience, you know, we learned a lot from rap. Uh, and we took a lot, we took a lot from hip hop artists to help build our brand. So, you know, being a big Wu-Tang fan growing up in the late nineties and, you know, when you saw that W that meant something, mm -hmm. you didn't have to hear Wu-Tang to see that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you saw the W, you are, you automatically associated Wu-Tang. And then when you, when you had the killer bees, like they had a mascot, if you think about it. So it's like even schools, you could learn a lot from schools. School is not a problem. It's what they're teaching that's the problem. But the infrastructure of school is actually pretty brilliant. Schools, they have, they have clubs inside of schools. They have sports teams to keep you engaged. They have times when you check in. They have periods. They have lunchtime. They have mascots. Mascots is extremely important. So it's like when you, when you saw the killer bee, that meant something. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, but it all equated back to Wu-Tang. But they didn't have to put Wu-Tang on every single thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you see us, our mascots, are our emojis. That's like a mascot, right? Yeah. Like that's like a team mascot. Yeah. That's branding. We don't have to put earning leisure on everything. So now you see EYL. EYL, three letters is very nostalgic when you think of luxury brands. YSL, like, you know, it's, there's a lot of stuff when you when you think of like three letters, like it's real easy to remember and it's an, it's a, an abbreviation. Mm -hmm. People love abbreviations. Even if they hate the abbreviation, IRS, <laughs> you name it. Like you know what I'm saying, <laughs> people, so, DA. Yeah, yeah. You, use use anything other than the IRS. Man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. The alphabet boys. Yo, we got Ani in here. Let's let Ani in. I would love yeah, yeah, let's bring him um, in. So, so, so that that's something that that's something to keep in mind as well. As far as you don't necessarily, and even assets over liabilities. I was assets, gonna go there. Assets over liabilities. Yeah. That's ours. We made that up. Anybody that's knocking that off, you should Please be ashamed so. of yourself. But um, once again, we don't have to put earning your leisure on everything because whether you see emojis, whether you see EYL, whether you see assets over liabilities, it all equates back to the mothership. That's exactly where I was going. And if you look at the most popular thing we sell, it is assets over liabilities, but it goes back to the, the, the point of what we're doing, right? Value, put value in your life, take the things out that don't add value, right? So assets over liabilities. And so when you see that, it doesn't matter where you see it, most people are going to think us. Mm -hmm. they don't have to, it doesn't have to say earn your leisure. When they see assets over liability, even some of those bootleggers out there, they automatically think <laughs> that, that that must be earn your leisure. And shout out to our lawyer who's on that. Uh, cease and desist, please. Yo, you but, guys. <laughs> yo, someone's under your guys' skin, man, because you guys nah, think, nah, right? you know, John, we, we just got to put it out there. We got to put it out there. <laughs>